Hey yo, if you have a selector, you should get the dual guns for Samir, my guys. Yeah, but what good are a pair of guns that you don't even know how to use, right? Hi. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Lace, and this is a Tower of Fantasy video. As you can see, I am hopping up and down off of a mushroom. Uh, yeah, we can talk about that another day. However, what I really want to talk about is how exactly you should use your weapons, right? Because just because you have a pair of dual pistols doesn't mean you are the king of the world. You have to actually know how to use them. And on top of that, although these pistols are freaking sick, we do actually have two other weapons as well. And so in this video, what I want to talk about is essentially rotations. Optimizing your rotations between all three weapons having a look at like the different skills that you use the skills that you shouldn't use and the order in which you should use them and so with all of that being said welcome to optimizing your team's rotation all right so to kick things off we have to actually understand every single character that is going to be part of the team comp i know i know this sounds like utterly utterly insane because you're like oh man i play with my character every freaking day but like for example did you know that huma is probably not only the best shield breaker but also one of the best charges when she is using her dodge attack in Axe form. Did you know that Samir's damage is predominantly thanks to the bullet rain, this one right here? And did you know that Meryl's discharge skill is actually almost comparable to that of DPS characters? It's all of these things together that is going to help us form our rotation because it's going to be like, okay, if they have a shield, we're going to use a shield breaker. If their shield is down, who should we use to actually deal damage? Should we use the Meryl? Should we use the Samir? It's going to be answering questions like that. And the more important thing is to actually find out which of the skills are kind of like useless which ones do you not want to be doing for example phantom kick when you do the dash or when you do like the airborne into the hold left click like this one right here that big slam you don't want to do that you pretty much see that you're going to be like okay well that's another dps loss in the context of like perfecting your rotation, very rarely you're gonna wanna actually do the dodge and the somersault. Because every time you use one of these skills, you're not using one of the more preferable skills, the next best action, right? Very much like chess, there is a best action that you could do next. And things like this, and things like this, the slam on the ground, those aren't it. The second thing we need to talk about is the context, right? So fighting a boss like this, an open world boss, would be very, very different to actually maximizing your DPS for, for example, Bygone Phantasm. And that is the example that we are going to be using today. I'm talking about this one over here, the floor by floor one. If you guys have not tried it yet, it's essentially your abyss in Genshin Impact. And so with all of that in mind, let me introduce you to my rotations and how exactly I came to it. But before that, I'm going to give you guys a quick crash course on my characters, which is first of all, Huma. We've got Meryl over here with the greatsword and then we've got Samir with the dual pistols. The incredible thing about Huma right now in the context of PvE is that not only is she an insane shield breaker, but she's also an insane charger, right? So if I do this, uh, go into Axe form, you can see that he's already half broken. And you can see that the dot is also breaking him as well. And if I do dodge into auto attack, dodge into auto attack, he's already broken. But if I keep going, look at my charge bar. Look at how fast my skills are actually charging. If I do it one more time, you can see Holy freaking shit. And so that is actually what most people overlook for Huma. They know that, you know, you want to do the dash and dodge uh, into the attack, that spinning thing, to break the armor fast. However, quite frequently is that after they see the armor break, they actually go into another weapon or something. They don't keep charging. And you got to keep charging, my guys, because it is actually a lot of damage with your discharges, especially from your DPSs. And so what's happened is that we've identified Huma into being a dodge dependent character. Anytime we want to take advantage of her best shield breaking and charging ability, we have to consume the dodge gauge. Now, what this means is that you don't exactly want two characters that are competing for the dodge gauge, right? Because having one character compete for the dodge gauge, you're already using your dodge for dodging attacks. Now you're going to be using it for shield breaking, and then you're going to be using it for what? Like charging up to bosses? You can do that, absolutely. And so for you guys who are uninitiated, to be able to take advantage of the sharp arrow stacks, the plus 15% damage, you got to be consuming dodge. It's not impossible to actually juggle the Zubasa as well as the Huma dodges. You just got to be a little bit more like, well, I guess less boomer than I am. In terms of Meryl's Greatsword, doing a dodge normal attack is going to get you like some kind of combo. It doesn't have super armor. It does decent damage, but you don't really want to be doing damage with your tank item, right? However, I can half eat my words because her skill and her discharge, like I said, they are actually very, very competitive in terms of DPS. And on top of that, what's really Really, really important about them is that it is AOE. Both of them are AOE. Last of all, we've got Samir, and I'm telling you right now that most of her DPS is going to be loaded into the bullet rain. So if you don't know what that looks like, it's essentially going to be a lot of spam. A lot of spam like this, and as you can tell, this looks like an AOE attack. Okay, I just uh, DPS lost. This is the reason 
why Samir is actually so freaking cracked. AOE, lots and lots of damage. And I kind of feel like the devs of this game really load the kits that have like the spin to wins. But let's save that for a conspiracy theory video. That is not this video. And so let's move on to some examples. All right, so here I've got some footage of exactly that area actually. I'm going to attack the Wraith. And essentially the TLDR, the summary for rotations is that first of all, you want to get them into shield mode. And their shield mode usually triggers at about 95%. How I do this usually is you use your DPS to get as fast into shield mode as you can. So you can see I'm going to do the Samira's thing and boom, his shield has come up. And so it's at this point you want to start doing your shield breaking, right? So for me, I'm going to switch into my Huma and I'm going to do the dodge thing exactly what I just told you, right? You would go into the E, into the dodge and spin to win. Dodge, spin to win. However, I keep dodging and spinning to winning because I want my discharge up so that I can throw my Samir's 3, the big electro thing, into the enemy. So you want to actually be using the DPS moves into the enemy when the shields are down. When the shields are up, you want to spend as little time in DPS units as you can. So I don't want to be in Samir when he has a shield up. When his shield comes down, I want to spend as much time in Samir as possible. And so his shield is down, right? I have two different options right now. I want to use Samir's first because he could recover, he could do a lot of different things. But I would go in the order of the most DPS to the least DPS, right? So I'm gonna go Samir 3 and potentially into, if it survives, into the, yeah, that thing. Okay, that one was honestly a little bit hard to follow. Let me show you another one. All right, so here is another example. This is the Bygone Phantasm level 47. And essentially the first thing I do is try to group up the mobs as best as possible. I probably should have gone for that group because they were like more central. But what I'm doing right now is I'm just like, you know, I'm just freaking walking around. I'm looking for that and not that. That was in my opinion, not a good or a bad move. Like doing the dodge, triggering the bullet time. I would have really ideally liked to have grouped them up more and then bullet timed to go into my Samir's ult. However, it is what it is and I am getting all of their shields up. Now, that one still doesn't have her shield up, but that's okay because I managed to go spin to win. I spin to win one, two, three, four, and then one last one over. Actually, no, all their shields are broken. And then I use my Samir and then I'm going to go up and do the DPS. AOE, AOE, AOE. And that is all you're going to see. And then after I run out of stamina, because remember, her bullet rain aerial is actually using the stamina gauge. And this is why it's so important to actually identify which ones are the best skills. If you had another character that was using stamina gauge as their main form of DPS, then it's not going to work with this Samir, right? And so after I've exhausted all of my stamina over here, I can then move on to Meryl because Meryl also has some really good DPS on her E. And I think that's exactly what I do. I line them up and then I go smack them with that. Now, from here, I can hopefully, yes, get into another bullet time. And these bullet times are what you're going to be spending a lot of your time on when you have like downtime from your combos, right? Because what it's going to do is it's going to give you a discharge and it's in your best interest that every time you bullet time, if they don't have a shield, you bullet time in a way that you will get your DPS's discharge skill. So what that means is be in the tank or be in the healer role. Like right now I'm in the sword. And so therefore if I bullet time, I have access to this three. I have access to the big discharge from my Samir. And so hopefully it goes as planned and I actually do use the Samir and go boom, and that is gonna be big, big damage. I can see my stamina is back up. However, their shields are also back up. So I need to go spin to win and really just cleave them down. And after cleaving them down, I actually go for the Samir ult again and then back into the Whirlwind. You can see it's very, very repeatable, right? So I am literally just cleaving them all down. I'm doing the same rotation over and over. If I was any good, I would have actually dodged that one and gotten into bullet time. However, I do have this one. I do have the Meryl ult and that's kind of okay. But generally speaking, the Meryl ult is good. It's usually my second preference in terms of damage. However, it does AOE, which is really, really nice. My first preference usually is going to be the Samir. And so at this point, I'm just kind of like finishing them off because we have a lot of time to kill. But you can see she Shields up, my axe form is out, and I am not leaving until I actually break their shields. Now, another example over here. So I can see they're like pretty much in all the different corners. I do that, but that's kind of dumb. I should be doing this instead, like straight up. I should be getting their shields off like that, getting both of their shields because Samir's auto attack, as you can see, it only hits one person essentially, right? That is why I want to be doing the aerial thing because the aerial thing is going to be able to hit that second one, the lieutenant, and trigger his shield as well. And so only after I trigger the shield do I go into my axe form. Right, so I gotta wait and now the shield's down. I go into axe form and then I do the spin to win. Spin, 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 spin. There is a third person over there. I just noticed. You guys see this guy over here, Lun. Lun has his shield up. And so because I did not wait for Lun to get over here and he has his shield up, my rotation is now ruined, right? Because I need to then use my axe 
to go fix this guy up, but then the cooldown is not going to be ready for these two when their shield comes back up. And so that is another really, really important thing. When you actually go to do any of these phases, make sure you catch all of them. Because if you have something like this, this is like a very, very not ideal scenario. This is going to dramatically lower your DPS and throw your rotations out the window. So I've just gone like a minute down the line. And what you're going to notice really quickly is that Lun over here, look, he's got his freaking shield up and these two don't. This is a dead run. Absolutely. In the context of getting the fastest clears, that is. And so honestly, with that being said, that's essentially going to be like my example in a nutshell. Let's start taking some like, uh, okay, what if King was in the comp, right? King instead of Meryl or King instead of Huma. It'd be simple. You would still be doing the shield breaking, but instead your shield breaking phase will be a lot longer. Like I get it done within like two, three seconds with this guy over here. But the principle remains the same, right? You want to discharge into your DPSs. You want to spend as much time in your DPSs as possible. You want to remember that Samir's spin to win is her main source of DPS. And then if you are going to use anybody who requires the stamina, it is like, it's less optimal. It will work, but it's a lot less harder to work with. And then on the other hand, if I, instead of Huma, I had a Tsubasa instead, like, so my Huma is using the dodge gauge, right? And so here's the other example I'm talking about. I'm going to be using Tsubasa's bow. I'm going to be using uh, dual pistols and I'm going to be using Meryl's greatsword. Now, Meryl's greatsword is going to be my primary shield breaking. Uh, I'm not really sure how I feel about this. I like to have uh, more shield break. But the TLDR is that where I was using Huma before, I will be using the Meryl now. And where I was using Huma's dodges, I can now actually use Tsubasa's dodge skill to be able to gain these stacks for the damage percent up. And so let's go for it. Uh, I'm going to go and probably gather towards this side. Dodge, attack, dodge, attack, dodge, attack, switch into this because I personally think that it has more DPS than Tsubasa's and then hopefully get everybody's shield up. Got to get this guy, got to get this guy. This guy is gone. Okay, he's got it. Now I'm going to go into Meryl and then go boom, boom, and then hopefully whack down all of their shields. After I whacked down all of their shields, okay, that, that didn't do the trick. That did one, two, three, and then I'm going to hopefully go into discharge for my uh, pistol, my dual pistols, or, or that would work as well. So bam, and I'm going to hit a couple of times again, and then I should have swapped weapons. So what you guys didn't see there was that I needed to have swapped weapons out into my greatsword or my bow so that I could get the discharge on my pistols, right? So they're up again. Let me try that again. And so I've got my greatsword out and this is how I'm going to armor break them. I'm just going to use my E again uh, and they are all broken. And then what I'm going to do next is go into my bow, charge this thing up again. And then you can see the discharge is on my pistol. I'm going to do this and you're going to see, I'm going to charge relatively fast, right? And so I just got to keep my eye on the meter that when I get close to fully charging, I need to switch out of my pistol so that I can go back into it using the discharge. But again, it's all up to the units that you actually do have. So this was a bad move. I shouldn't have gone into the matrix with my pistols equipped. All right, I think that's actually gonna bring us to the end of the video. And so I do want to ask you guys, uh, who are you using for your team comps for Bygone Phantasm? Because to be honest, I've been spoiled by Huma and Meryl by the double shield breaker trait. I really freaking love it, the fortitude. And so I'm not really used to using something like this. However, if it was like a Meryl and a King and a Samir, maybe it would be a bit better considering I would have more shield break. And so my guys, let me know down in the comments below. But if this video did help you or you kind of enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, to the channel and turning on that notification bell but otherwise my guys as uh as this portal once said all good things must come to an end so thank you guys so much for watching i'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye